I have five pages on the bird right here, but I can't preach it today. What's incredible is that let us create man in our likeness in our image. Let God created mankind from the dust of the earth. Right? Do we all agree on that scripture? Then God breathed the spirit into man and he became a living soul. When Adam partook, out of the garden. But he didn't finish that. He looked at Satan and he said, because you've done this thing, all the days of your life, somebody say all the days of his life. All, all the days, days of his life. life. You shall crawl on your belly <laughs> and you shall eat of the dust of the earth. Interesting that flesh man, before he become a living soul, flesh man was made of the dust of the earth. Interesting, anytime you're fleshing, the enemy's got a right, he's got a commandment from Father himself to eat that flesh. Yeah. Why? Because no flesh shall inherit the kingdom of God. No flesh allowed. Okay. Say, no flesh allowed. No flesh if I start fleshing, sure. come on, say, if I start fleshing, I start the, fleshing. the devil's got an illegal right, the devil's got a legal right. To, eat of me. to eat of me. See, I didn't make that up. The Word of God. It's written. How many knows that whatsoever is written is established? See, but yet the body of Christ don't understand that he's going to and fro across the face of the earth cleaning up the flesh mess. He's commanded of God to clean up earth. Why? Because my spirit shall, I, that, that the earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof. So therefore, because you screwed up and you deceived men, Satan, you're going to clean up my earth for me. You're going to see. He's on assignment, all right, but he's on assignment to clean up the earth for the, for the Lord. He's cleaning up the flesh out of the earth. Why? Because even as it is in heaven, so shall it be on the earth. There ain't no flesh in heaven. It's only God, the fullness of the joy. It's only the fullness of the Godhead there. Only the fullness. Well, behold, the kingdom of God is within you. So if we're trying to get the kingdom of heaven into the earth, Guess what? We can't be fleshing to do it. The devil's out there cleaning up flesh, getting it out of the way, making room for the kingdom of God. You understand? He's like a street sweeper. He's cleaning up all the dung so the Spirit of the Lord can move into the earth. How does he not attack you? Good question. Good question. He doesn't get to you when you're not fleshing. He doesn't get to you when you remain hidden in Christ. I truly believe that attack that happened on me in New York brought me to a greater level. The reason it brought me to a greater level is to understand there is a real devil and there's a real devil trying to eat flesh. He wasn't attacking me spiritually. He wasn't attacking my mind. He tried to. He tried to attack my physical body on planet Earth to where I said, who are you? Instead of saying, ouch. Ouch. I hurt. Ouch. Man, what's wrong with me? I must be getting... See, he was trying to get me to question my healing. Right. He's trying to get me to question who I was, my identity. And my question was to him, who are you? Then I knew what battle I had. Yeah. And I realized the battle. That's why I laughed out of my spirit, because the war had already been won, and I knew that. Well, big deal. And it means... It's written. As soon as I said it's written, bam, it's gone. I'm a son of God. Because he gave me power to become the sons of God. And I've become the sons of God because I'm reading his word. And I'm being transformed into his likeness to his image. So every ache and pain that comes to you. I had a, a, a girl the other day ask me, rightfully so. It's a great question. She said, I, 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 I posted an article on Facebook. And she says, so are you, and you it's insinuating that all sickness comes from the devil. Well, if you really want to understand this whole question, let, let's look at the other side of this coin for a moment. If all good things come from above, where's all bad things come from? <laughs> it, it, it pretty much makes it simple. Yeah. So get your intellect out of the way and get the word on it. 
and so I waited and somebody else responded and I waited and somebody else responded and then I responded and I responded with about 30 verses and I said now just read these maybe they'll bring clarity to you and because for the most part the body of Christ doesn't believe that sickness comes from the devil otherwise they'd stand against it oh it's quiet in here let me preach over here where they like me a little better <laughs> For the most part, the body of Christ believes what the doctor says, not, not what the Word of God says. Not me. <laughs> well, this really doesn't go over popular when you're in a church full of people that's sick. Because they, people like to own something. Put it in writing so I can see it. My doctor said, well, okay. My doctor said, what's your doctor saying? Okay, there's a, there's a report. These are facts. Here's a report, and this is truth. Um, facts, truth. Facts, truth. Choose this day who you're going to believe. You believe the facts? I'll not eat of that tree. I won't eat of that tree. If I ate of that tree, you might as well open a casket and put me in it. If I ate of that tree, you might as well go get the wheelchair and wheel me out to the car. If I ain't in that tree, you might as well shut down Glory Revive Ministries right here and now and give up all hope for anybody to become the healed through the words that I speak. But because I will not eat of that tree, the tree of knowledge of evil, not good. See, I'm already partaking of the tree of good. Amen. I don't have to be convinced of the tree of evil. See, my knowledge is on him. Yeah. You shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. It's the truth that you know that will make you free. See, I'm already back in the, uh, the garden. So are you. You're already positioned in the garden spiritually. Yes, and it's the same devil as you said the other day. Boy, I'll tell you what, we've been pounding around that for a, about a week now. So, praise God. But it's the same devil that came to Eve. It's come, continuously coming to the bride of Christ. It's the same devil. And if you're not on the word, on the truth, if you're not sticking to the truth, what happens is that you will embrace, you will be deceived in, in, into believing the report of the doctor. Your body might physically have that. Your body, the facts might show, the blood reports might show, but it doesn't, it doesn't have a legal right to stay there unless you say, okay, you can stay. When you come in into agreement, where any two shall agree, it shall be established, whether that be good or whether that be evil. See, we've taught the good part of it, but we didn't teach, we didn't teach the evil part of it. Uh, oh, I agree with what the doctor says. Okay, if you say so, because even as a man says, he shall decree both life and death. It doesn't say maybe. Out of this tongue proceeds both life and death, healings and curses. And see, what happens is we set ourselves back up underneath the law and the curse of it. But my word says that I shall know the truth and the truth shall make me free. And I've been redeemed from the curse of the law and all of its symptoms. Yeah. Every time, not sometimes, every time a sickness tries to afflict this temple, I remind this temple it doesn't belong to itself. This temple has been bought and paid for by the blood of the Lamb, and I'm an overcomer by the word of my testimony because my testimony lines upon his testimony. And see, we have to come into the right standing of who we are. This is who we are, even as he is, so are we. And when you come into that identity, there's no weapon formed against us that shall prosper. It doesn't say it won't be formed. It doesn't say it won't come against you. But one will not prosper. I draw a line in the sand. There it is, bud. And when you draw that line in the sand, say, no more. It's established. And it's easier to keep it out here that allow it to come here. Or furthermore, we're coming right here. Because it all starts right here because we think in pictures. We think in imaginations. That's why the word tells us casting down every evil imagination that exalts itself above the knowledge of God. Bringing every thought captive to the obedience of Christ. When we grab that imagination, no, that's not the mind of Christ. 
The Word of God says, who has the mind of Christ? Who shall know the mind of Christ? Man, the body of Christ run with that forever for a long time. Well, you can't understand God. God is sovereign. Really? So, okay. Yeah, nothing happens unless God permits it. Well, then just embrace that sickness. You go ahead. Why are, you, why are you praying against cancer if everything is God's will? Just go ahead and get cancer and die. Wait a minute. You say it's a sovereign God. Nothing happens without God allowing it. Wait a minute. Go out here and get a car wreck. God allowed it. You tell me, you tell me my. Really? That's the most stupidest doctrine I've ever heard in my life. God is sovereign. You know what that is? That's laziness to get in the Word of God. What does the Word of God say? Nothing happens without being God's will. Well, it must have been God's will. Let me tell you something. That's a lack of faith. Faith begins where the will of God is known. And it's a laziness spirit. It's a, it's a lethargy spirit, a lethargic spirit that come across the bride of Christ and they had to have an excuse to blame something on somebody. So why not blame God? It's God's will. Faith begins where the will of God is known. If you do not know where the will of God is, you have no faith for it. Faith is the substance of the things hoped for. We hope and hope and hope and hope and show me the substance. Okay? Here's the contract. Here's the contract. There's my substance. The new covenant is my contract. He signed it. He can't go against it. It's his word, not mine. Above all things, it is my good will. Of all things, that you be in health. And prosper. But you got to know this. Your soul's got to prosper to do this. Right. We can't just guess at it. We can't just believe some preacher up here preaching it. you got to dig in and find it until it becomes your revelation. It is my revelation. Yeah. I have got the revelation that I shall live and not die, that I might declare the glorious works of the Lord. I have my revelation. That it's the same spirit that raised Christ from the dead dwells in me to quicken this mortal body. Quicken, restore, rejuvenate, revive it. Bring it back into its original context the way God created it to be. In his likeness, in his image. I have my revelation. But you can't live on my revelation. That's one thing I cannot impart to you is revelation. The word of God, because Jesus said, I'm not going to leave you comfortless, but I'm going to send one after me who's called the Holy Ghost who will teach you, bring revelation to you of all truths that I have spoken. It's the Holy Spirit that brings revelation. And unless you sit, unless you take time to develop that intimate relationship with him every morning, good morning, Holy Spirit, teach me in the revelation of God's word today. And unless you develop that, you're riding on some other man's revelation and never become true to you. It will only become a guessing game. Come on, come on. Amen. Amen. I heard that. So you have to develop your own revelation. It because you have to own it. It's ownership. It becomes personal. Seek out your own soul salvation. Seek it out into your own soul, into your own mind, into your own will, into your own emotions. Your salvation. Your sozo. Your nothing broken, nothing missing. Seek it out for yourself. Get it from your soul. Get it from your inner man. Open the valve and let it come all the way out into your body. Boy, you know what? Silver or gold have I done, but what I give you, I rise up and walk. And that's when you begin to see it pop in your own life. I'm trying to teach the body of Christ to unshackle themselves. Yeah. You can't unshackle somebody else if you're not unshackled. Watch out, I'm going to slap that little bun on the back of your head. No. <laughs> I love that girl, man. She's awesome. One day I was pulling up here in the parking lot and honked her horn. And we've been kind of tag teaming ever since. So praise the Lord. That's when you think see things pop. When you own it, you become it. When you own it, you become it. Yeah. Come on. Good work. That's why Jesus was led away immediately after he received the Holy Spirit on planet Earth as a man. As a man, John baptized him 
Holy Spirit lit upon him, and immediately the Holy Spirit said, okay, come on, time to go to the wilderness. Yeah. Why? So you can become an authority yeah. in earth. Exactly. Had he not done that, none of us would be. Right. He, the devil tempted him in all ways. All ways. He was tempted in all ways that we were tempted. That wilderness experience, he was tempted in every way. Yeah, he was tempted financially. Yeah. He was tempted in compromise. He was tempted physically. Sure. He was tempted on, on owning everything. Because yeah. you've got to remember at that time, Satan was the Lord of this world. Yeah. And Satan said, well, if you just bow down and worship me, because he knew. He knew. If he didn't bow down and worship him, he's going to have to give it up. And so he didn't. Yeah. Who are you worshiping today? Did you bow down and worship him? Did you give it up? <laughs> At one point or another, we've all given it up. I'm not surrendering no more ground. No. I'm taking it back. Amen. And I'm taking it back violently. Amen. By force. By force. Because the kingdom of God, honey, we've all in this room had something right. <coughs> But you know what? We take it back violently. We take it back violently. How do we do that? Use his word. It's already been victorious. Use his word skillfully. Being become becoming living epistles read of all men. When they see, if we could just get, if we could just come together in unity in the body of Christ, and quit looking at that outward of man on people. And look at each other when they come forward. Behold, here comes the image of God. If we could just see that inward man, man, we'd come together in the body of Christ unlike any other army that's on the face of the earth. But the body of Christ has been fighting against identity, been fighting against positions, been fighting against titles, been fighting against oh, oh apostle so-and-so, prophet so-and-so. Don't tell me your function, honey. Tell me your identity. Hi, I'm a follower of Jesus Christ. Amen. I'm a son of the Most High God. Amen. Just tell me who you are. Because the Word of God says that, that, that no man, unless he, he makes Jesus his Lord, I'm paraphrasing now. What's that scripture again where it says that uh, unless he's questioned by the Holy Spirit can say, Abba, Father, who? What, what, no, no man can say that Jesus is Christ. Unless he's led by the Holy Spirit. No man can say that Jesus Christ is the Son of God or the, the Most High unless he's led by the Holy Spirit. He can't cry out, Abba, Father. No. Abba, Father. Who's crying out, Abba, Father? Sons and daughters. Yes. Right. See, you can't cry out, Abba, Father, because you ain't got no father. Yeah. Well, you might have a father, but it's not of this world. Well, not, a, not of the kingdom. Not of the kingdom. <laughs> That's the world I live in. I have to slow down sometimes. See, so Revelation 3 and 18 says, I counsel thee to buy a gold tried in the fire that thou may be rich, and white raiment that thou may be clothed, and that the shame of thy nakedness does not appear, and anoint your eyes with eyes loud that thou may see it. As many as I rebuke, as I love, how many in here believes that the Father loves them? Yep. Yes. Yes. All right. He's rebuke and chasten me. I rebuke and chasten Be zealous, therefore. Be quick, be energetic, and repent. Change your way of thinking. Then he says, what happens when he's, he talks about, he's talking about as many as he loves. And so then he says, behold, I stand at the door and knock. And if any man hear my voice, stop right there for a minute. Who hears his voice? My sheep know my voice, and a stranger they will not follow. He's talking to the body of Christ here. Yes, he is. Yes, We've used that scripture as reference for salvation. That's wrong. Yeah, that's wrong. If any man hear my voice, wait a minute. My sheep hear my voice. And open the door. I repented. I turned my way of thinking. I heard his voice. The door is open. Remember, he opens a door that no man can shut. I will come in and him will sup with him and he with me. To him that overcometh. I'm an overcomer by the blood of the Lamb. So I'm an overcomer. 
He's talking to the bride of Christ here. You are an overcomer by the blood of the Lamb. It's to Him I will grant to sit with me in my throne. Even as I also overcome, I have sat down by my Father in His throne. Remember the word says that he is, we're seated right now in heavenly places with Christ Jesus. He that has an ear. Who has the ears to hear? The church. Let him hear what the Spirit of the Lord is saying unto the church. Yeah. Then he goes on in verse 4. After this, after what? After he received the rebuke, after he received the chastising, after he repented, after the door was opened, after he heard his voice, then he said, John says, and behold, a door was opened into heaven. See, we're trying to get into heaven without being in repentance, changing our mindsets. We're hoping, we're hoping, we're hoping, instead of just doing, doing, doing. Now the door in heaven, and the first voice which I heard was a trumpet talking with me, which said, come up here, and I will show you things that must happen hereafter. We're trying to find out what's happening down here. Jesus, when he was talking to the disciples, said, my job's over with. I'm going to send one after me. Who's going to teach you in all truth? And then it go on. He goes on telling it, and we'll show you things to come. And now, the Lord is saying, repent, change your way of thinking, put on the mind of Christ. Come on up into heavenly places where you're rightfully, you've got a right to. you got an open heaven, you got a door open the whole time. Don't pray for it, just get there. See it from heaven's perspective. He's going to show me things to come from here, not from down here. He's going to show me things to come from here, not down here. I see things from heaven's perspective. I bring it into the earth. Even as it is in heaven, so shall it be in the earth. Why? Because I got the answer in heaven. I saw things to come. I saw Butch walking whole. I saw Butch walking completely without a cane ever again. I saw Butch. He's coming into it. He's coming into it. He's coming into it. His body has to submit to it. Sooner or later, it will come forth, and you're going to walk forevermore in a straight line, my brother. Why? Because I see it from here. The other night we saw somebody at Thursday, I don't know what night it was, we were at a meeting at Star David. And the gentleman came in there and he had a broken ankle with cowboy roper boots on. I'm walking up in there like this. And I'm preaching. I'm winding down. Got through praying for people and somebody raised their hand and said, can you pray for him? So what's wrong with you? So I broke my ankle. I had to shift my mindset. Don, were you there? You were there. You saw it. I said, what's going on? He said, I broke my ankle on a motorcycle last night. I looked down at his ankle. He looked at the camera. I put my fingers over, my thumbs over, and I said, well, Father, I just pray recreate for all things that are damaged. God, because you've got new parts. And you can recreate all things that are damaged right here in Jesus' name. And he stood up. I said, try it out, bro. And he turned his back to me, and he lit up against the wall. And he was crying, weeping. And finally, he turned around and looked at me. I said, are you crying because you're hurt or are you crying because you're healed? I wanted, to, I, wanted to, I wanted to know. And he said, he said no, it quit hurting. And he stood up on it. That was on, I think that was on Saturday night. It was on our Saturday night glory reminds service. And so Sunday morning at church, I was back in church. Here he come walking by me one. Yeah. Oh, check him out. It's just good because that's what I expect. And if I get people to expect that, it pops. But you have to know that that's what the word says. We don't have to tolerate stuff. Because in this world, we're going to have trials. We're going to have tribulations. But Jesus said, don't let fear set in. Fear not. I've overcome the world. Because fear has the same power in it that faith does. Except it brings all this bad stuff to you. Right. Oh my God, I hope pg and &E don't get shut off. Shut your mouth. Yeah, You're creating that. death right there. Yeah. Oh, I've been bombarded with those thoughts. I know. You know what comes out of me now? Money come in the name of Jesus. Yeah. You serve me that we can get the kingdom of God into the earth. I don't serve you. I don't work for money. You work for me. And I work for daddy. 
and it shows up. I'm telling you, it just shows up. You might think this is way out there. It, yeah, it's a way out there. It's it's not here. It's right here in heaven. Because the same spirit, not a different spirit. It's the same spirit. You see, I'm, I'm looking at my automobile now. We've, it's been a good car. We've put a lot of miles on that car. It, 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 it's been brought to me by daddy, and daddy owns it. And so, praise God, I look at it. I said, you know what, Dad? I'm almost due for an upgrade. And I don't want to buy one. Well, how are you going to get one? God can give it to me. God can give me a car. I work for him. You see, I'm there, brother. I'm not trying to get there. I am there. I'm there with, you know, it's, it's, I'm just there. I don't know how to explain it. It's been step upon step, line upon line, precept upon precept. This healing to this healing, this miracle to this miracle, this element to this element. And I'm thinking, come on, bride of Christ, raise up into your rightful inheritance. Psalm 66, 12 says what? He said, I've been through the fire. I've been through the flood. And now I'm about to walk into my abundance. What, what is about our rightful inheritance? Why? So we can get the kingdom of God further into the earth. So I can get the kingdom of God further in the earth. I, we're booked right now. Somebody just called me the other day. And today, I've been saying, Father, look, we need to get some things going on. I want to teach some more people. He said, okay, great. So I, I put it out there. I'm availing myself to you. They, one person was booked throughout the year. Oh. It, praise God. I got a response this morning. November 3rd just opened up. Would you like it? Yes. <laughs> praise God. Amen. Another person, day before yesterday, I think it was, or a couple days ago, said, Hey, listen, I'd like to have you down in Southern California for a conference. Can you come down for three days? We're going to ordain somebody. I want you to, uh, to pray over them with us and, and praise God. But can you come down? I'd love to have you on Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. I said, yes. Give me the dates. So they give me the dates, and I'm just about ready to purchase the plane tickets. And the Lord said, wait. Said, Southwest has only got a sale until 4th of July. Ended today. So day before yesterday, I got a text back from him. He said, well, I made a mistake on them dates. I'm telling you, you've got to be sensitive to what the Spirit of the Lord is saying. You do your groundwork. You do everything you're supposed to do. But be sensitive to what the Spirit of the Lord is saying. I said, okay, praise God. I'm glad I didn't purchase those, right? Right? And I'm taking an armor bearer with me. So if you want to sow seed into this ministry, praise God, because I, I need to take it with me. I'm not going out of town for three days by myself. I'm taking an armor bearer with me. I got deep tent stakes around my marriage. I got deep tent stakes around this ministry. I keep it firm around me. Why? Because I'm going about the Father's business. That's just simple as that. Simple as that. That's wisdom. Yes, it is. And so all of a sudden, I said, okay, let me check. So we looked at the calendar. Boom, boom, boom. It was two weeks later. I said, yeah, I'm good. I said, are these gates good? He said, yeah. Bam, yesterday. I said, you know what? I'm going to fly out of Sacramento. Let's check Oakland. I don't have to leave this early to get into Oakland. Praise God. And I get to come back 45 minutes later, which is good because Sunday afternoon I, I get to come back up. And plus I saved a hundred bucks. Okay. Amen. I just fly out of Oakland. Man, how good is God? Clear. <laughs> So I've got the, it's booked, it's scheduled September 21, 22, and 23. We're going down in there for a conference. And things are just opening up. They wanted to keep me in New York. And I said, I can't stay. They said, I want to come to Rhode Island. I can't stay. I want to see you over in Detroit. Can't stay. I've got a home. I've got a wife at home. So praise God. So I believe that God just really opened up the region back there as well. We're looking at some other things as well in ministry. We're, we're about to jump into uh, a larger production uh, arena networking. Uh, we're about to launch into that <clears throat> by faith. Amen. And the word of God told me, do it by faith. It, it, this is what the Lord said. I mean, it's, it's more money. But you know what? Money serves us to get the kingdom of God into this. I didn't have the money when I went on television station now. The Lord says, Alan, if you can't believe me for this. Because it's extra money per month. Yeah. He said, if you can't believe me for this, how are you going to ever believe me when it becomes a million dollars a month for television? Mm -hmm. You know, and that just kind of concluded the whole matter. 
It really did. How can I believe him for a pair of tennis shoes when I wouldn't go look? How could I believe him for reaching more lives unless I looked at the way of doing it? We're talking back in December, if you'll remember, when the Lord told me, I want you to get ready to expand. Now he's stepping it up. Provision has been made. Excuse me. Availability has been made. I've looked at it. Everything is ready. And I'm, I'm like ready to add to cart. It's like the Southwest <laughs> plane tickets. Ready to add to cart. Click the mouse. Lord, Lord, Lord. Are you moving by fear or are you moving by faith? Click the cart. I just got to check one more sale. <laughs> and it's not, it's not the sale part, really. It's not. It's the means of doing it. Because along with it comes closed captioning, the, 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 the more people you reach, the, the more they expect out of your, your programming. And so I haven't learned to do closed, closed captioning yet. Uh, there's availability to do that. It's like $30 a program for somebody else to do that for you. And which might not be the way, and a bad way to go to start. Because it's a time thing. It's, it's a big time thing. And the timing is everything. And having the time and availability to do it. I can do it. I just don't know that I have the time to learn to do it. And then do it. Yeah. And so there's, there's more to it than just, you know, typing it in. There's, there's a lot more to it. And, and so, and I've realized that I've done a little bit of research on it since, since this. And so I just have to believe God for the right and the correct direction to go. I am going to put it out there that we are definitely putting it out for more partners uh, because I'm never going to reach it without partners. Uh, because I planted that money tree on my ranch a, a few years back, and that sucker just yeah. refuses to produce money. <laughs> and every time, you know, every time it got blooms on it, and I go out there and water it real good, and I look at it, you know, oh, this is a plum tree. <laughs> and this one over here, oh, this is an apricot tree. It, it, oh, there's a lemon tree. And by the way, I had this lemon tree that has not produced lemons in the last five years. Whoa. In the last five years. The, the entire time we've been on the ranch, this lemon tree has went from here to it's about nine feet tall. And this year, I walked out there to it. Of course, we're getting ready to move back in the house, and the, and the lemon tree's on that property on that side. I walked over to it, and I said, listen, you and I got to have a talk. <laughs> this is a true story. <laughs> this is a true story. <laughs> I said, you and I need to have a talk. Now it's time you produce fruit, citrus fruit, great, big, juicy lemons, just exactly the way God created you to do. And you produce it now in Jesus' name. And I took off and walked away and watered it. It's got nice lemons on it now. All right. Honest to God. <laughs> Honest to God. Because I'm, I'm realizing, you shall declare. And I'm realizing that he sent his word, and his word is 